The Earth's magnetic field is like a giant bar magnet. This magnet forms a protective field around the Earth, shielding us from the solar wind that is constantly streaming towards Earth. This shield is called the magnetosphere. The solar wind is primarily composed of protons and electrons, charged particles streaming out from the sun. Some of those particles have very high energies, radiation energies, and they can damage astronauts and spacecraft. We are shielded by our Earth's magnetic field most of the time. However, a small fraction of the solar wind particles get into the Earth's magnetic field, are energized, and become the Earth's radiation belts, which can damage spacecraft and harm astronauts. But the sun has a magnetic field of its own as well, which the solar wind carries outwards towards Earth. Over 30 years ago, Voyager 1 and 2 set out for Jupiter, Saturn, and beyond. Now as the twin spacecrafts explore the outer reaches some 9 billion miles away from Earth, they have crossed the heliosphere, the bubble of supersonic solar wind. However, when Voyager 2 crossed this boundary much closer to the sun than expected, we received a picture of a squashed heliosphere rather than a round bubble. The squashed heliosphere helps scientists build up a picture of how the sun interacts with the space outside of our solar system. The sun, like all stars, creates a bubble around itself, and it's that bubble that the interaction from the wind from other stars and our own sun interact. And we are now in the outer layer of that, of that bubble where that interaction takes place. So for the first time, we're now, now able to observe how our star interacts with what came from other stars outside. The solar wind is a stream of particles flowing away from the upper atmosphere of the sun. It is expands to a long distance. Uh, the solar wind expands against the interstellar medium, creates a cavity that holds our solar system. This cavity is called the heliosphere. The solar wind plasma and the interstellar plasma are coming in and colliding with one another, basically. And they're producing this very complicated boundary layer of the inner heliosheath and the outer heliosheath and the termination shock between them. We've been studying something uh, called the anomalous cosmic rays with our instrument. These anomalous cosmic rays come from deep in our galaxy and have no electrical charge. Somehow, at the heliosphere's termination shock, they've been accelerated to a high energy. But Alan Cummings found surprising data from both voyagers. There would be more particles at low energy and fewer at high energy, and it'd be a certain way that should look. And that didn't happen, and we were really astounded. Uh, it didn't happen in Voyager 1, and so some theories were put forward, well, maybe there was a transient from the sun just at the right time that caused those particles to kind of be disrupted in their acceleration. We didn't see them. If it had been a quiet period, we would have seen what we expected to see. So we said, okay, well, we'll have another chance with Voyager 2. So Voyager 2 went through the chuck, same thing. We didn't see what we expected to see at all. And so the origin, the source, where these particles are accelerated is a big mystery. And what is the big, one of the big mysteries of the termination shock crossings? One of the interesting surprises from the Voyager solar wind instrument was that we expected all of that energy from the million mile per hour wind when it abruptly stopped or slowed down to heat the wind itself to a million degrees. And what we found instead, the wind was only 100,000 degrees after it had slowed down. Most of the energy, 80% of the energy went somewhere else. Meanwhile, closer to the Earth, a pair of satellites called Stereo we're launched to find out just how the sun's influence affects our planet. Space is full of stuff. The Berkeley team was surprised when Stereo's STE instrument, designed to measure low energy electrons, seemed to be receiving another kind of signal. It was obviously detecting something else that was out in space. We learned that space is empty, a big void of absolute nothing. Even to this day, that is taught in our schools and still believed by many educated people. The horrible truth is that space is not a void of nothingness. Space is filled with something that is capable to cause resistance and motion. 
The worst of it all is that we do not know what it is. Oh yes, we do realize space is full of all sorts of particles like electrons, neutrons, protons, and then we say there is black energy and black matter. On this stage, I'm only going to make this statement. Space is not empty. It is filled with cosmic radiation. Cosmic radiation is also recognized as not only consisting of elementary particles, but the largest percentage is something we do not know, understand, nor can we observe that. It is only there because we can already see its effect in our normal matter. Our solar system is not a void either. Even though we are in between two spiral arms of our galaxy, we are still engulfed in a cloud of energy. Now what I would like to stress with this video is the following. Space is not a void of nothingness. There is a massless energy that has the ability to react and push against normal matter. There is a potential of this energy to transverse at greater speed than light. Lastly, it is my belief that our demise will not be from here. It will be coming from far outer space. In essence, this is what have a direct effect on our Earth and also on our Sun, which will then affect the Earth even more. This event has already taken place, but it is so far from us that we did not even see the light of it yet. 